We are back with another edition of Scotty's Record Collection on Vinyl. Uh, you've actually been doing a lot of fine-tuning of your record collection uh, the last couple weeks, haven't you? Yes, I've managed to get most of everything sorted. Yeah, if I could pan this around, you could see how much has actually been done, and I actually have helped out a lot with that. So, Well, I mostly just sat here and handed Scott records if I could. But that helps. Anyway, so here we've got an artist I've been waiting to do for a very long time. I, I could, I've done this on CD myself. But this is Stevie Wonder. I'm just going to reference this right off the bat. Stevie Wonder is one of those core musical things of mine. Uh, when I was younger, my actually a baby, my mother used to sing my Sharia more to me when um, trying to put me to sleep. So it's a core memory. And, and you know, whatever Stevie put out, you know, part-time lover or albums like Characters, you know, when I was a little older, those would always be around the house. So Stevie Wonder was a consistent presence. Uh, I don't know if you had similar experiences with him or what. No, my parents never listened to any Stevie Wonder stuff. I tend to get into this stuff when I got older. I started listening to my own music. Yeah, well, and that's the, that's the interesting thing about doing these. You know, you have two people who may be close together, but they have very different experiences. But this is a collection of albums and 12 inches, and it's not complete. Stevie Wonder has a an enormous catalog, you know, spanning the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And, of course, he had that childhood career, uh, which we'll be covering a little bit here, but we're going to start out with a 12-incher that features a collaboration between him and another Motown child star, Michael Jackson, and that's Get It. Uh, that's from his album, Characters. I noticed whoever had this before you, Scott, wrote Hot to the Corner. <laughs> yes, it was a pretty good tune. Yeah, I, just, I, know, I love those little writing things when they're cool, you know. Sometimes they're... Yeah, and this is the remake. I have this, actually. I think you may have seen this in one of my collections. Um, and they actually did another collaboration on Michael Jackson's Bad album, which we covered called Just Good Friends, which was not a big commercial success, but this was a big hit. Uh, because, you know, Stevie Wonder was making a comeback. Michael Jackson was sort of. So that was a big deal. I think that's 87 that came out. And I'm sure it's just a standard little Motown label. Oh, actually, it's a little, little bit different. Bit different. This is promotional. It's a promotional Motown label. Can we it up front a little more. It's kind of purplish on top, so it's a promo. Mine, I think, is a standard Motown label. So, Anyway, this is something we got together, I think, wasn't it? Yes, we did. Uh, I had this on CD, and the reason I did is because, you know, Motown was all about singles. You know, the, the album thing wasn't really happening at this point. This was, I think, 67 or 68. Motown made a bunch of these on the Marvelettes, on the Temptations, many artists, and Stevie Wonder had one. And this covers part of that childhood career. You know, I didn't really have songs like Hey Harmonica Man and Workout Stevie Workout on anything else. So I still have this CD. And, and it's cool you have the vinyl, too. This has some things you generally don't find on, on albums. So this is kind of a cool set. I, does, does this have the old uh, Tamala label on it? This one actually says... Oh, you want to see the back, too? Yeah, the back has a little testimonial on Stevie Wonder uh, at the bottom. There you go, the Tamala label. I'm going to say this is 68, and there are the Stevie Wonder albums available at that time. At least they were in print. He had a couple al other albums there that aren't listed, but anyway. Uh, I think um, Scott actually has a story with this record, and I do too, but I'll let Scott go first. Uh, this is one of those records that I bought because of the album cover. Yeah, just the, with, the, with, the, with the coral beads and the, and the dreadlocks. It says, I love that painting. And, you know, Hotter Than July. And I think if there's another thing on the back where there's a piano burning or something. Yep. And this is the gatefold that opens up. This is the gatefold. Yep. Open has the lyrics, lyrics in it. Is there a... Do you have the original sleeve went with this inside? Because there was a sleeve that had stuff on it, too. Yep. Uh, the, uh, Stevie Wonder was working with the late Gil Scott Heron to um, get Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. There's the Tamla label from 1980 celebrated in this country, which was successful in 1986, save for a few Southern holdouts. This album has Master Blaster on it, the tribute to Bob Marley, and it has Happy Birthday, of course. Uh, one of my favorite songs on this is actually All I Do, which he recorded for the late Tammy Terrell in 1967, but he redid it here. He had the Gap Band on backup vocals. Um, this also has another of my favorite songs by him called Rocket Love. And, you know, obviously, um, you know... This album was sort of kind of the end of his classic period, but it is a great cover. My personal thing, this is the first Stevie Wonder album, album on CD I actually ever bought. I was at a store called Strawberries, and 
they had this on CD for one of their five ninety nine CD sales, and I was with my grandparents, who were both deceased now, and I had one of my old tape players I bought over. They had a CD in it, one of those front loader CDs. Yeah. Remember those? Oh, yeah. I put it in, and I was playing it, and I had Rocket Love on, and my grandfather came in, and he was sort of mumbling and humming it. It was it was sweet because he always loved Stevie Wonder stuff. So, you know, he he's one of these guys, you know. Uh, he was sort of to me like a modern day Gershwin, you know, he just had that, or, you know, um, a modern day Jelly Roll Morton, he was one of these people, uh, or Duke Ellington, he did a song called Sir Duke, but, you know, he could, he could write songs, his songs are kind of standards now, you know, you could look at it that way, and he's uh, only 67 years old, but I just have my memory of that. And one of my favorites that's on here is I Ain't Gonna Stand For It. Oh yeah, I love that, that's the one where he's kind of doing that little faux country thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that, that's a cute one, yeah. Um, in Square Circle, uh, this album, uh, I like the vinyl he's sitting on. It took me years to figure out he was sitting on a vinyl record. If I understand this, he had this album recorded and done in 1983, right? And then he performed stuff from it when he appeared on Saturday Night Live. It didn't come out for another two years. So this album has quite a little history. Uh, Part-Time Lover was a big thing. He wrote that for the Supremes in 1966 or so. But if you know Diana Ross's history with Barry Gordy... And, you know, the fact that, you know, if you listen to the lyrics of that song, you might see why they didn't <laughs> put that out. But uh, that may be only rumor. I, I don't know. I mean, there are people who have other ideas about it, but that was the first song. And it's kind of an old Motown thing. It sounds like the Supremes. And this also has Overjoyed on it, too. Which is an outtake from another album that I found out later. We'll get to in a little bit. Uh, one of my favorite songs on this, to be honest, well, I have two favorites. Um, one of them is a song called I Love You Too Much. And another was a song called Apartheid, It's Wrong, which is at the end of the album. Oh, and Go Home. Yes, Go Home. Yes, Go Home was one that really bought me in there. And that is a 12-inch 12, 12 version of that, too, which I don't know if either of us have, but uh, I'm looking for that. And I never did take the plastic off this. It is a gatefold, but I've never taken it Yeah, there's some, there's some liner notes in there if you have that vinyl where there's like a story or something. This is um, actually, this came out in 1977, I think. Uh, I actually have this too. This is a three disc set. Now we're talking about that early childhood career. This covers it enormously well, you know. Um, even better than those great, greatest hits. It has a lot of, like, Thank You for Loving Me All Waves, one of his first songs. It goes from 1962 to 1971. So it's pretty much a 10 year span there. They're the first decade of his recording career. It's got a thing of Stevie Wonder. It looks like it's from around that 1977 period. This came after another album that was very big. I don't know if it, there's a different late. It's actually Motown. This is actually a Motown record. Most of Stevie Wonder's stuff uh, in the 70s and very early 80s on the Tamla label. This is actually a Motown release. Tamla being a subsidiary of Motown at the time. Uh, Part-Time Lover, the awesome new 8 minute and 20 second version of the classic hit. Uh, which had just come out if they put, they put this out. Yes, it has. Didn't it? So the classic hit that had just come out, that's cute. Um, that's a picture on the inside of Talking Book, if you open it up. There's a lot of pictures. And Talking Book was a digital recording. I mean, not Talking Book. I'm sorry, that's another Stevie Wonder album entirely. In Square Circle. Get that wrong. In Square Circle was a digital release. Uh, I have an import version of the CD that has a blue um, European Motown label on it. So, that's kind of cool. And it's that it's a Tamla label again. Then, now, here's another Tamla label that I've never seen before. It's an import of some kind. This was the promotional, same the version. The promotional, okay. Same version of Part-Time Lover that's on the other 12-inch. It's just that it had a different label and is promotional. Yeah, because the Tam looks like the promotional Tamla labels were a little skewed to the side. Yeah. Is this sealed? Uh, no. It's just kind of sealed at the top, yeah. That's a promotional, same kind of content, I guess. So that would be 85 that probably came out. The original music Aquarium. This came from another Greg album, I see. Mm -hmm. This came from 1982. He had some stuff, I guess, from Hotter Than July era, whatever. He put on this. It was a song called Do I Do and Ribbon in the Sky that were very nice. you know. And, and here's the albums he recorded that are featured on this. Um, songs from these albums. Some of which you'll see, some of which you won't. Now, this album, um, the songs were actually remixed. The single version of You Are the Sunshine of My Life with horns is on here. That's the version you'll hear on the radio. The album version, when I get the album it's on, which we may talk about later or may not, uh, the album's called Talking Book, might as well say it, 
didn't have the horns. That was something they added later. Stevie played all the stuff on the original, but they added the horns of the Wonder Love band later, but they remixed them, they kind of go into each other. It's just a really great compilation that shows you where he was, was and where he went to at that point. So, This is a soundtrack for a film that, I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube before, I, I think you can see it on YouTube. It's really obscure. It's a documentary about people communicating with plants and how plants communicate. And it's, a, it's one of my favorite items. It's getting a lot of world music influences. First time I ever saw Stevie without his shades on. Another. Another gatefold. One of my favorite songs in this album actually was sung by his ex-wife and musical collaborator, the late Cyrita Wright, and that was Come Back as a Flower. This also has Send One Your Love on it, which was a big hit. And one of my favorite songs, Outside My Window. And if I understand it, and this messes me up to show you how much this guy recorded, Overjoyed was made in this, this, this period. Because it used the same African water drum that... Uh, and one of my, two of my favorite songs on this album are Power Flower, which I think is just beautiful. He's singing in a falsetto, acting out the character of Pan. And Race Babbling, which is kind of, I guess, his disco song, talking about life being connected and talking as a germinating plant. You need us to live, but we don't need you. It's an interesting theoretical album about plant communication. And there's some interesting music on here, but it didn't do much for his career, but I love it, just for me personally. We had to wait three years for Stevie to put this album out. I wasn't live then, but uh, this is Songs in the Key of Life. Uh, probably intended to be a triple album, but came out as a double with an EP. And, uh, you know, there's that uh, famous Stevie Reflection picture. I don't know if you, you had the EP, right? Ah, yes, I still have the original. Yep. And there's a booklet that comes with it, too. Insert. And if you ever find this album, it's not, it shouldn't be a hard album to find. You want to find it with all this stuff in it, because it was, it was a big deal. All this stuff was supposed to come with it, and there was booklets, and he had this big annotation. I don't know if it's in the back of this or not, where he thanks all these people. Here we go, this annotation. A lot of these people, I mean, if I recall, he thanked Quincy Jones and Van Morrison, Eddie Kendricks of The Temptations, I think Van Morrison, you know, David Sanborn. All these people that I didn't know were on this album or not. Pointer Sisters, Ray Parker Jr., I know they work with him sometimes. Doobie Brothers, he just thanks so many people. And oh, um, I saw Scott Edwards in there too. Am I listed again? Yep, Scott Edwards. I've been personally thanked. <laughs> There's a little joke. There's a bass player named Scott Edwards who played on Saturday Night Fever in a lot of sessions then. And you know, Scott and I have that little joke. So anyway. Um, and there is the, there's the EP. EP that, that has All Day Sucker. Um, Saturn, Ebony Eyes, and the instrumental called Easy Going Evening, which, which was uh, which were made probably around that time. So, there we have it. Uh, this is what we have for Stevie Wonder. Again, this is by no means complete. I thought Talking Book was in here. Um, somehow I thought albums like Inner Visions were in here. They're not. Uh, but, you know, the 70s obviously were his major point, but... You know, th there's a good possibility there'll be more Stevie Wonder, because there's so much more out there, I, I, so much more classic stuff, but this is what, you know, this is obviously what, um, it, it, he, this is what Scott has. So, it's good to be back, good to be back making videos, and nice to have everything organized, isn't it? Yes, it helps having everything organized, because I can put my hands right on where it's at. Exactly, and now you can also kind of, if you get new things, you can insert them to what's already there. You know, you don't have to worry about, oh my goodness. So, this is... This is what we got for Stevie Wonder, and we'll see you next time. Peace to all of you. Peace.